Well, good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, while hopefully uh, equally as important, I can promise you that we will not be here this long uh, for the uh, Proposition PD summary. So um, again, uh, just to go a high level overview of what was presented to us, how we got here, and then solution um, that was a lot of work by the Council uh, and the city management and, uh, and so what we're putting before uh, the voters so that they are informed. Um, again, uh, I've said this before, but I, I wanted to uh, reiterate uh, the deep appreciation of uh, the police department, myself, my staff, um, on, to both the entire council who met, as you will see uh, many times, as you all are, are familiar with this and addressing this challenge that was kind of uh, thrust upon us, as well as city manager Zach Walker, uh, assistant city manager uh, Lisa Reynolds, um, and uh, various other members that we relied upon between HR and, and payroll uh, to put this together. So uh, without going into gross detail uh, for you, Basically, uh, the story goes, as about March, we started hearing rumors that the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department, who at that time were approaching a 400-person vacancy within their sworn personnel. Again, to give you some context, uh, Independence is currently authorized at 230. Kansas City, Missouri Police Department is currently authorized at 1700. So, um, again... They, uh, they had made operational changes um, to kind of deal with the vacancies due to budgetary constraints, recruitment and retention challenges that all of us have faced across this profession over the past several years. Um, and it finally uh, came to a critical mass for them. Uh, we started hearing these rumors in March and, uh, and we kind of were gonna wait and see. Uh, wait and see what that impact would have knowing that uh, a lot of times no different than any other city, um, with a little caveat that they're state controlled, um, that budgets and, and other things are, are the predominant driving factor. Uh, so in April, uh, we learned that they did in fact approve a substantial wage scale adjustment to the members of the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department. Uh, namely, that they would start a police officer out at uh, 65000 and end in an eight-year period, they would reach and progress through their wage scale to top end at just north of $104,000. Uh, to give you and the citizens at home the comparison for us, we were starting in the uh, high 40s, so you're talking about a $20,000 difference between starting police officer in Independence and starting police officer in Kansas City. Um, initially, that gives me great pause uh, as the chief of police for one reason more so than, than others. We are a relatively young department, um, and I don't mean that in um, necessarily age, but more in tenure. And uh, we have gone through some attrition and turnover in our department over uh, the past several years that have um, really seen a, a turnover and an influx of new employees to the police department. Um, what that does is that in the retirement system or the pension system, the vesting period for our employees is five years. So to have a department primarily composed or, or a large substantial portion composed of those that are under five years, uh, it really doesn't give you a whole lot of, of leverage and loyalty and staying power to retain those employees when they can go to the neighboring jurisdiction and make $20,000 uh, instantaneously uh, and with uh, a four-year lateral could make even more than that. So um, I'm trying to be a little cagey in that I don't want to make this a recruiting video for the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department. So I'm going to, I'm just, uh, uh, I'm just putting that out there. Um, however, we'll be happy to take any of their personnel uh, over here anytime. So, um, so that posed a, a, a significant problem. The other piece of that is that we are a younger in age department, which you, you think about the new financial strains of a young family, children, uh, new home, trying to, you know, affordability there, inflationary pressures and rising costs. Again, when you're faced with making those kinds of decisions and you can go just to the West to do the exact same job um, and make that kind of money, um, what in the world is keeping you here? So. 
Um, again, that, that happened pretty rapidly. That went into effect on the 28th of April. I happened to be uh, down at the state police chief's conference at the time. Um, and as you can imagine, as I shared with the council, that, that created quite the uh, discussion amongst the state police chiefs around the breakfast table. Um, and so there was some immediate reaction to what do we do? Uh, on, uh, on the way home, I called and filled in the city manager, um, and actually upon my first conversation with him that morning, uh, I learned that we had five uh, additional personnel, uh, good solid police officers that were doing what is considered a ride along uh, with the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department. And so as I shared with the council and I've shared with citizen groups, uh, police officers don't go ride along with another police department uh, just for to learn the job. We do it every day, we do it uh, and, and live it. So they're doing that for one reason and one reason only and that is prospective employment. Um, so that, that's a, a pretty uh, significant challenge um, when we are already sitting with 35 vacancies to lose five and these five additional personnel um, no doubt are the kind and caliber of officers that would take other officers with them um, just by nature of who they were. If you compound that with uh, the, um, the Sorry, I went too, went one too far. Um, so if you compound that with the difference of what we were looking at as far as what Kansas City's announcement, which garnered 22 certified applicants, and I've said before the difference between a certified and a non-certified is that seven and a half month gap of going to the police academy, whereas a certified officer, somebody that would come from another Missouri post-certified department, um, can make an immediate impact. They go through that same 14 week, um, sometimes even expedited from their FTO or field training program, and then they are on their own uh, making an Im immediate impact in our community. So uh, Kansas City, Missouri, uh, Missouri Police Department had shared with our hiring uh, and background investigator that they had the 22 certified applicants just from the uh, anticipation of the announcement. And then in the three day period since it went into effect until I got back in the city on May the 1st, they garnered 44 additional certified applicants, which the uh, wisely the Kansas City, Missouri uh, police employee would neither confirm nor deny included uh, members of the Independence Missouri Police Department. So. Uh, you compound that with the five that we knew that were riding along, suddenly this becomes very urgent and dire. Um, again, um, I am not by nature an alarmist. I am very much a dig in and solve a problem. Um, but this uh, very truly, as I uh, said to you, uh, is what kept me up at night. This is, uh, we, we are at critical mass within the, the Independence Missouri Police Department, given the expectation of the service that we provide to our community that we're very proud to provide to this community. Um, we are pretty much at bare bones to be able to continue that level of service. So if we were to start losing you know, 10, 12 officers, uh, we would have no choice but to reduce services in, in some form or fashion. So whether that's calls for service, whether that is um, units, uh, you know, similar to uh, what the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department was forced to do, um, functions, some, some hard and tough decisions would need to be made. Um, so, uh, wisely, the city manager felt like this was urgent enough. It needed to be uh, brought to the council's attention. Um, graciously, you all came in uh, and met. I was home long enough to shower, change clothes, and become presentable to come up here and meet. Uh, we met several times through the weekend, uh, going over facts and figures, and, and really, after digesting the problem, um, it was uh, immediately, okay, we know what the problem is, we know what we need to do, now how do we get there? How do we solve the problem and come up with a solution. Um, and so here is that solution. Um, we were in, uh, in current negotiations with the members of the Fraternal Order of Police, um, which we were both working together, the city and uh, the department and, and the, the FOP collectively, uh, to try to, to get ahead of and address these issues. Um, and I will tell you that, that it was a, a phenomenally collaborative uh, effort on, on all parts. Um, so uh, after our weekend, again, started on May the 1st, May the 6th, um, through the council's wisdom, it was decided that uh, this effort to match Kansas City was, was not financially feasible. That would cost us somewhere on the whole of about six to $10 million. Um, so it was, how do we get as close to Kansas City as we possibly can to uh, not only uh, retain who we have now, but attract and recruit uh, good commissioned officers to our city. Um, that proposal 
was uh, the, the wage scale that was upgraded. So we start out um, at $62,000 and we top out at the end of this four year agreement with the FOP actually higher than Kansas City at 105. So you can make um, more money at the Independence Missouri Police Department. I'm switching this to an independence recruiting video here as we speak. Um, and um, the, uh, we reduced that wage scale from what was 20 years to progress through to top out to 16. So very, uh, very favorable in that regard. Um, additionally, what was negotiated in is that we added back in the protections, which is a benefit that neither, uh, no other municipality around here can say that they have, uh, which is the health and retiree uh, uh, medical benefit for uh, 55 to 65. Again, without getting too much into the weeds, uh, due to the, the nature of the demands of their jobs, public safety employees, both police and fire, um, and, and some detention officers uh, and uh, dispatchers are able to retire at 55 years of age uh, with full retirement, whereas the uh, other non-public safety employees as their designated first responders uh, are el not eligible until age 60. Um, so we were able to protect that health insurance benefit, uh, and I will tell you that uh, we proposed that to uh, that that uh, change to our peer city counterparts and um, unanimously they said we can't afford to do that so um, that is a lucrative benefit uh, for us to be able to recruit in um, and uh, and as you will see or have seen the media coverage that was there we swore in our first group of five uh, commissioned all commissioned police officers last Wednesday uh, that was all since this went into effect so it does have an effect and it is having an effect um, I, I think it will uh, largely I think probably there are some that are waiting to see how this plays out before they uh, just to make sure that it is sustainable uh, before they would make their final decision. But I will tell you that we have had interest from multiple city departments and we just uh, commissioned uh, our first from out of state. Uh, she was from Texas. So um, we are getting the word out there. Um, so again, I kind of hinted uh, a little bit is how do we sustain this going forward? Again, through the city manager's office and the council, uh, we were able to pull together for this fiscal year, one-time uh, usage. A lot of those are the American Rescue Plan dollars that, again, just to, to let the citizens know, those have to be allocated and programmed in this fiscal year. Um, so they had to be used anyway. Uh, we were able to uh, go forward and, and program those to sustain this package in year one. Um, However, we don't have that lift to the tune of, of three to $5 million next year. Um, so the city is obligated uh, to this. They've agreed to the, the wage scale with the FOP. Um, so I was recently asked uh, when I was presenting to the Chamber of Commerce is what happens if this measure does not pass. Um, and that would be, again, we're right back to that tough uh, decisions and, and just very candidly, that's going to come with a cut in personnel. Uh, there's no other places for us to be able to cut within the police department budget um, to come up with this mechanism. So uh, again, the citizen or the uh, council have put forth this measure, uh, Proposition PD, uh, which is a quarter cent sales tax that will be on the ballot on August the 6th, uh, unless or until repealed by the voters. Um, it is average or estimated that this will bring in about $5.4 million a year. Um, and again, uh, we'll get into here in just a second, the cost of that, it, it is 25 cents out of every $100. So flip a quarter and there you go. Um, so uh, that, that is uh, the overall cost of this, um, that will sustain this and keep certified officers here, recruit, attract, and retain um, very talented uh, officers to come and work in our wonderful city. So I kind of uh, uh, hit all of this again, um, five cents for every $20 spent or a quarter for every $100 spent. Um, again, I, this has been highlighted before. I don't know that it is up there, but one of the important things to mention is that about 40% of our sales tax are paid by non-independence residents. So that's a, it's not just on the backs of independence residents, but that's also a fair measure because non-independence residents come in here and are, are uh, 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 consumers of our services as far as uh, the police department. So um, just wanted to throw that out there for the citizens' benefit. Um, 
Again, a uh, quarter of every penny uh, spent, five cents for every 20 or 25 cents for every 100. You'll see there um, at the bottom, uh, there's that 40% measure uh, that, are, that come from non-residents and $5.47 million is what it is estimated to bring in. The biggest criticism uh, or question, I don't know that I call it criticism, it's a, it's a good question, um, and, and there is some misinformation, so I wanted to take time to clear this up, um, that we've heard um, is that there's anywhere, I've heard anywhere from seven to 10 to unknown amounts of, of tax uh, initiatives that support the police department already. Um, again, fair question, good question, so it's important to educate a little bit. Um, so initially we had the long-standing public safety uh, sales tax, which is both police and fire. There's a, a quarter cent there. Um, however, that tax initiative, as you will see, the public safety sales tax, which is overseen by a, a citizen-led public safety oversight, uh, sales tax oversight committee, which actually oversees all of these. So it's the same group looking at all those expenses um, and revenues coming in and, and weighing those out. Um, that is for equipment only. So very um, largely, as you can imagine, um, this has gone through several iterations over the years. However, uh, cost of vehicles have gone up, no different than when you go to the car dealer, uh, you know, when we buy those vehicles. The cost of equipment inside of the vehicles, lights, technology, all those things have gone up. Um, the cost of computer and other things, there is no salaries or benefits whatsoever that comes from the public safety sales tax. It is all, all equipment driven, largely the radio system that we have, our Motorola contracts, which are multiple millions of dollars a year. Um, part of this was the Axon contract that was the vendor that was selected to update and modernize our technology platforms, which we, uh, the citizens have seen. We've rolled out our body cameras. Uh, tomorrow starts our in-car fleet upgrade, um, so we are really on our way. Um, that's this, this funding that, that provides that, but no salaries and benefits. Uh, after that was, uh, we got into the, the um, need for additional police officers. We had not updated uh, our staffing uh, appreciably since the 1960s. Um, so in 2019, uh, the voters approved Proposition P. Uh, which was not only us, but the animal shelter, um, and that was the use tax. So you hear those used interchangeably. Um, again, that was to hire 30 additional officers. It also supplemented up to $750,000 to the animal shelter. Um, that still is in, in place today. However, in 2021, uh, it was overproducing. Um, and um, so as such, uh, it was in uh, good wisdom that we went back to the voters and asked them to expand that um, to outside of that additional 30 officers to allow us to do equipment, not salary and benefits, but equipment, um, uh, and then supplement the salaries for um, the wage, uh, for the negotiations for the FOP, that was retention bonuses, all of the um, higher bonuses, the $10,000 hiring bonuses that were in there um, uh, that we put out to try to recruit, uh, those were from the Proposition P. Some other things that came out of that expansion, uh, the cost of ammunition went up overnight almost, um, much like other things during and post-COVID pandemic. Um, we spent $80,000 over what our budget was uh, just on regular department ammunition um, in 2022, 2023. Um, so that was an overnight hike. Um, again, cost of vehicles went up again uh, post-COVID and supply chain um, through those economic drivers. Um, so we were able to, um, we had to, to adjust to that. That comes out of there. Um, and then most recently, we were able to update um, through, again, uh, a surplus that we had or, or the unassigned fund balance through good, good financial stewardship. We were able to update the mobile command center. That's a 20-year asset. Um, and combination between Prop P um, and the PST, we were able to update um, our armored vehicle this fiscal year. So the Bearcat um, that is long overdue and has some, some bullet round uh, 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 marks on her. So uh, we were able to get that done as well. Um, so again, all equipment um, and, and then with the additional salary and benefits um, from Proposition P, but that is, um, that's capped where it is now, um, would not allow for this expansion. Then came the marijuana sales tax. Um, unlike a uh, normal quarter or eighth cent, um, I guess I should note that Proposition P is an eighth cent, so, so different um, from, from the public safety sales tax. Marijuana sales tax is a 3% just on the sales of uh, uh, recreational marijuana. 
uh, from the uh, dispensaries that are here within the confines of the city, of which there are four. Um, that is generated to or estimated to bring in about nine hundred thousand dollars and that was all infrastructure driven as that was this council you all are, are intimately familiar with that but that is first and foremost to be used for the new uh, justice center uh, design and uh, infrastructure needs to, to get that project off the ground um, that will be followed up by another uh, geo bond discussion that, that we've clearly been having multiple times um, over the past year um, but that is, uh, that's the marijuana sales tax. So that is the three taxing initiatives that support the police department. Again, the only one of which for, for wages, which are tapped at those 30 officers, um, is, is the use tax, which leaves us to Proposition P. Um, so that's what you have before you. That is uh, all I have for you, but I would be happy to take any questions that uh, the council may hear uh, or have, or if you've heard, I know uh, several of you have been out uh, engaging with our community. Um, so if you're hearing other things that I'm able to clear up or, or uh, address, I'd be happy to do so. Thank you, Chief, appreciate it. Uh, anyone else, other questions? Please proceed. So Prop PD can be used for salaries. Um, but it can be used to cover all the costs that come with that. So when we increase salaries, that means we increase loggers' contributions. All of those can be paid for with these dollars so that we don't have any more loss of general fund. Correct. Um, just, I've had that question. I just yep. want to clarify. Thank yeah, you. Wages and benefits, fringe benefits included. Social Security, uh, Medicare, all those costs. Thank you. Anyone else? Other comments, concerns? All right. Thank you, Chief, very much. Appreciate it. Mr. City Manager, anything else to follow up on? Uh, no, thank you for the indulgence tonight. 